Hello and thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. Today we're going to share our enhancement we made to Donna's Christmas gift. This is the Brown Elf Proto that I gave to her in December. It's a great little rifle. We've made some changes to it. We try, we're try. we trying to make it more authentic, um, even though it is a reproduction. Um, it's never going to be 100% authentic, of course, but uh, we made a lot of changes to it. I have the parts that we changed that laid out on the table, and I'm going to go through them piece by piece. But before we do that, I want to show you where we got our inspiration from, and it comes from the Vickers AR-15 Guide Volume 1. I'm going to bring this over. i got to kill the lights so we don't get any glare. All right, this is the second edition of the book. It's a fantastic book if you haven't picked one up. They are expensive, but well worth it in my opinion. So we have Armalite number three. And here's a left and right shot of the rifle. Now we can't make the furniture 100% correct unless we did a complete custom prototype of the furniture. We still are going to do some modifications to the existing furniture that's on the, uh, the reproduction now, but we're not sure what direction we're going to go. We're pretty close to being complete, though, minus the furniture swap, and I'll talk about what we're missing. We're going to turn the page. I'm going to show you in detail some of the things that we changed. If you'll notice, the pins stick out here a little bit. The original ones, they sat flush, the ones that Brownells made. Um, they have a milled front sling loop and a spiral, or I'm sorry, a split pin here to hold the sling swivel in. So we added one of those and got rid of the aluminum riveted one. Um, it has a knurled round slip ring. It has a magazine release that has a circle that you can see in it when it was parkerized. It has a bolt catch. Now these are completely different from a modern AR. But what we did was we tried to modify an existing bolt catch to look like this. It has dimpled hammer and trigger pins. It does have a sling swivel on the pistol grip. We have not done that to ours. And then I'll flip it over to the other side. And I'll show you some more changes. We have a dimpled rear takedown pin. We have a dimple on the selector, only on the ejection port side. We have a serrated magazine button. We have a 601 style dust cover. Now we do have a reproduction on there that we changed from the Brownells version. It's still not 100% correct, so we're still hunting for a dust cover that has the roll pin. Um, there are some on Gun Broker, but we just haven't gotten around to get it yet. Uh, and here's another angle. You can see the flash hider on it. The Brownells does not come with that type, so we changed it. So it was a true representation of this particular model number. This has the bipod collar on it, which is welded in place, which we added. As you can see, again, the, the pins are sticking out. Those are the taper pins. But just a lot of small little details, and that's a different number, that we decided we were going to add to try to make it, like I said, more authentic. The lights are back on. Let's go ahead and go from front to back to talk about the modifications we made. First, we changed the flash hider. Here's the one that they come with. This is sort of a, a 601 style flash hider. And this is the one that we put on here. This is a reproduction. Moving back a little bit, we added the bipod collar and it is welded in place. Try to pick it up and give it some better light. And as you can see, the newer taper pins are protruding. All right, those are the original pins, so you can see they were shorter. We added some longer ones on there. Now, another reason that I attacked this area is because if you remember the original video, if you haven't watched it, go back and take a look. Um, the front sight base was canted pretty badly. I actually corrected that. So I mocked the front sight base up in a proper position and then cut for oversized taper pins. We also added a split pin for the front sling swivel instead of the aluminum riveted pin which modern ARs use. 
And then the original front sling swivel that they had on there was one of the, uh, I guess you could call it plastic dip or rubber coated ones. So what I did was I took another version and I removed the rubber coating. The original one, it was milled, it wasn't a stamp piece like this. So this isn't done, but it's a little better than that one, I think. We left the hand guards alone for now. We did add a, what they refer to as a seat belt sling. These feel like uh, seat belts in like classic cars, 60s and 70s type stuff. So we added that. I did modify the magazine. We didn't show it in the book, but the early versions of the uh, prototype guns used a specific magazine. It's not compatible with modern ARs. The magazine catches in a different spot. But Brownells reproduced the 25 rounder, and what I did was I did the distressed paint finish that you saw on some of the early guns, specifically number one. Um, but I thought it was neat, even though the number three and the Vickers book doesn't show this green mag in it, I replicated the, uh, the flaking paint which was sort of a pain, but we were successful with it. Set that to the side. Let's move our patch off to the side, too. We swapped out the fire control group. This is the standard fire control group, which is just the standard AR-15 type, standard pins. No dimples on the end, so the easiest way for us to find dimpled pins was to put some guys' lead pins in here. So you can see that they're dimpled. You can see the G on there. That wouldn't be correct. But the reason that we added the guys Lee is because we had one in the shop and if you look at the early prototypes they had a, a slim hammer that is very similar to a guys Lee. So again, more for cosmetic reasons we went with the guys Lee. That gives it a better trigger pull too. Moving from there, we changed the pistol grip screw. They put the standard Allen type on there with the, uh, the lock washer. And what we did, let me get my light see if we can actually see in there. It might be difficult, but we put a slotted screw in there, and that's actually one of the Colt 601 styles. It has a hole in it for safety wire, so you can't see it, but it is an original 601 grip screw. So we changed that out. Let me move these parts out of the way that we covered so I don't go back to them. Things want to roll away. From there, we changed the slip ring. This is a reproduction. It's knurled. We blackened it. We wanted to give it a little bit of a worn look. But this is a uh, an early M16A1 and an earlier slip ring. So we changed that out. These aren't bad parts. They just weren't as correct as they should be. Um, from there, we did change the, uh, the rear sight wheel. If you see on this one, this is marked 1 through 5. And on the early guns, they actually had an arrow that pointed with an L on it. And of course, we still have part of the forging here where it has the arrow with the right. So I'm thinking maybe I'm going to mill that off and have the receiver refinished. But we changed the wheel. Some of these parts were made by uh, Braceman. Some of these parts were made by John Thomas at Retro Arms Works. Um, we added a dimpled takedown pin and selector so this is our standard selector that came in as you see it just has no tick mark no dimple and then the takedown pin was the same way so I'm keeping all the original brown else parts so it can be converted back if we decided we were going to sell it uh, something like that we don't think we're going to but I like to save the original parts if possible so we have our dimpled areas there we changed the magazine catch as you can see the one that brown else equips is the multiple circles, and then we added the serrated one. From there, we also added, well, I did this, I added a dimple. It's probably very hard to see there for the trigger guard, but there's a dimple in it. And if you look really closely in the, uh, the photographs, they were dimpled, and there's the detent itself without a dimple on it. All right, on the other side, I'm going to flip it over. On the other side, we have our magazine catch. You see the original. You can see where they swage the, uh, the rod through there. And on this one here, we have one that's completely flush. I think this was made um, by Black Rain Ordnance. This wasn't something that was like a reproduction from like uh, one of the retro guys. And then we changed the bolt catch. Here's the bolt catch that was in it. Standard AR-15 M16 style. 
what we did was I found a POF bolt catch which had a protruded paddle here and it had the regular ping pong paddle shape to it. So what I did was I ground this down, I grabbed that, I ground that paddle off so it gives it this look that the original gun had and then I had it reparkerized. From there the last external modification we did was part of the dust cover and I talked about that a little bit. Um, this is, I don't think, correct. This is a reproduction dust cover and you can see that it does look different than the one that Brown also includes. The original prototype had a roll pin that shot through the, uh, the mechanism here. And then of course the dust cover rod we also replaced. You can see they use a C-clip on that just like most AR-15s and M16s do. And if you look closely in the book, they actually swaged the front of the dust cover rod so there was no C-clip to hold things in place. It was just mashed flat so the rod would not come rearward out of the gun. Alright, and before we get into the gun, the last thing we changed was the uh, the screw for the buttstock. Now on the original guns, I don't think this was visible, um, but this one has a drain hole which is M16A1 and later. And what we did, let me see if I can get this positioned so Donna can see it. It's completely plugged up. No hole in it. Alright, next what we're going to do is we're going to break it down. Open it up. I'm going to show you what I changed on the inside. Here's the inside where the Geisle is. You can see how it's real thin. I'm sure everybody has seen a Geisle before. Nothing groundbreaking about it, but if you look, if you rewind and go back and look, um, you might be able to see some of the internal pictures. If not, I can break it back out before the video concludes. Um, the thing that we did not touch at, and this is part of the list of things we still want to do, we're thinking about maybe stenciling the original retro logo, the Armalite retro logo in here. Um, I want to change the buffer. This has a standard M16 style buffer on it. What I'd like to do is add one of the early pre-Edgewater buffers to it. I'm going to have to make that. Nobody makes one like that. So there's still a change there with the buffer that we're going to make. Besides that, let's go ahead and get to the bolt carrier changes. So the biggest change is the carrier itself. The carrier that Brown Ellis includes is a slick, slide, slick side carrier, tongue tied there, and they staked the gas key from the side. And this is fine for a reproduction, but it's not as accurate. If you look at the gas key, you can see it sort of squared off and then it goes round. Well, the early guns had what they referred to as a full round gas key. If you look closely, you can see how this is round. So this is in a, an older 601 bolt carrier, slick side. You can see that they stake from the top. It looks like somebody went behind this at some point and tried to stake. You can see that they had a larger divot here for the firing pin retaining pin than the reproduction does. And of course these were much rougher than the modern stuff that we use too. A lot of people see this older stuff and they're like, wow, it's pretty rough. It still worked though. Alright. We did change the firing pin retaining pin. This is a modern style. And then what we did was we added a reproduction which was very similar to the ones that were included in the early guns such as the 601s. They were silver in color so this is black. It's not 100% correct. Where things really start getting interesting is when we deal with the firing pin. The firing pin that they included is this one here, and this is the one that it should have in it. It's also referred to as a fat firing pin. These can be dangerous on some guns with soft primers. You can drop the bolt carrier group on a live round, and it's possible in some instances where the mass of this can cause the gun to fire without touching the trigger. All right. Cam pin's pretty much the same. We kept the original in there. Our bolt is the original Brownells bolt, but what I did modify on this was the extractor. Now this, I'm not as happy with this, but what I did was I tried to create a squared off lug extractor. I'll try to get another one in the photo here to give a better look. But here is the extractor that it came with. And then this is what a full lug extractor looks like. This is an original Colt 601. Can you see how they square it off? right there and where these have sort of a ramp. 
So what I wanted to try to do is create a fake lug extractor and that's what I did there. So you can see my modified one, the lug is shorter, but you get the idea. These are extremely hard to find so that's why it doesn't have an original in there. Um, I did remove the, the donut that Brownells includes. They put an insert in the donut. Some of the early guns had uh, white inserts. You would run into them every once in a while. I don't believe the prototypes had inserts at that point, though. I may be wrong. I'm not as much of an expert on this stuff on the, from the historical side. Um, you want to talk to somebody maybe like Chris Bartucci or other collectors in different venues. I'm more of a technical guy. So we're going to get this back together real quick and in this video we're actually going to test fire it. So once I get it back together I'm going to show you a picture of the inside of that prototype. Again real quick, we're going to pause the video. It would help if I put it together right. No cam pen. <laughs> I'm sure someone was yelling at the screen like, what are you doing? Now all these aftermarket parts in here I did gauge out, of course. I don't do anything without picking up the gauges. Everything's been checked for uh, headspace, alignment, dimensions, everything that's important. So we saved all the original parts. We're not going to discard them. We're going to keep them off to the side. Get this back into the gun. Let me bring the cart back over. I'll try to find a picture of the inside. I'm probably going to have to kill the lights. There we go. You can see how the hammer is pretty fat. Let me grab a modern hammer real quick. A modern hammer, a lot fatter. It's pretty similar to a Geisley in my opinion, so that's why we went with that. Of course, we don't have the extra hole in our lower. It's not a machine gun like the early guns were, but we're trying to make things as as close as possible. John Thomas from Retro Arms Works does um, what he refers to as a fake light refinishing. Um, he refinishes the buttstock, the pistol grip, he adds the sling swivel here and uh, tries to make it more authentic looking. Um, I may send it off if he's still doing that work. If not, I'll take a shot at trying to make these look more like Bakelite. But uh, we're going to pause the video. And I'm going to get set up at the trap, and you guys are going to see this thing go boom. All right, we're back over to the trap. What we're going to do is we're going to shoot this into our test fire trap, make sure that we have proper function. If it sounds like I'm yelling, it's probably because of my hearing protection. What we're going to do, this is sort of sacrilege, we're going to try... The Magpul 30 round, we're going to put three rounds through it. We're going to put it through one safe. We're going to put the reproduction magazine in it that has three rounds in it. We're going to fire this until we get bolt lock. These mags can be sort of finicky, so we may have an issue getting proper bolt lock on it, but this will be a true test of what we've done to make sure that it's still operating properly. So we're going to get this into the snail trap. I just hit the water switch. Seated, charged, weapons on fire, and some brass may come towards the camera lady, but she won't get hurt. Test fire. This is going more back, so I'm going to try to catch it this way. We're going to put it on safe. We're going to put the original mag in there. These are 55 grain projectiles, just like you will be using in the early days. Back on fire, and here we go. We're going to do four more rounds because we have one in the chamber. We're going to see if we get test uh, bolt, test lock. Test fire. There we go. We have bolt lock. Hope you found this video educational. Thanks for watching.